Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to One MC Cherokee. I am the One MC MC, Matthew Thomas. My this is our MC, so it just kind of rhymes. One MC MC MC. Uh, thanks for coming out this morning inside the lovely Canton Theater. How many of you is it your first time here in the theater? Anybody? Wow. Well, welcome. Isn't this thing beautiful? It, it is quite a gym. Um, Big thanks to Bob Seguin, the theater manager here. In case you're interested in coming out, the Canton Theater is a very vibrant and active venue. So before you leave, there are schedules of upcoming programs. I encourage you all to grab one. Hopefully something catches your eye. You may want to come back, bring the family, who knows. But this is, this is one of our best kept secrets, but we hope to no longer keep it a secret because of how, how wonderful the venue is. Uh, but again, welcome to 1MC. 1MC, of course, is short for One Million Cups. It's based on the notion that entrepreneurs discover solutions and generate some of their best ideas in networking over a million cups of coffee. 1MC was created by the Kauffman Foundation. Uh, there are chapters all across America. This one, of course, is ours, 1MC Cherokee. First slide, please. 1MC Cherokee is, uh, 1MC is a free program designed to educate, engage, and connect entrepreneurs with their communities. Oftentimes, communities aren't aware of some of the startups, some of the businesses that are really truly being hatched in their own backyard. 1MC provides the venue where that business, or really any business, can present that idea to the community and the beautiful thing about it is it's all really inclusive and open to anyone in the community who either wants to hear or wants to share an idea. So that is one of the real sort of uh, characteristics of 1MC culture. One is that it's safe and supportive. Anyone with an idea, anyone with a business is welcome to present at 1MC. Second characteristic, it, it is inclusive and diverse, meaning it isn't limited to just one particular sector or one particular type of business, but really truly it can be any business as long as it's an early stage one uh, or stage two business or a startup, then it is certainly welcome to present at 1MC. Uh, the last thing is 1MC is respectful and considerate. I've said this before, but 1MC is not Shark Tank. It's not where we come and just rip business ideas apart but it really does provide an, an environment where a business can present knowing full well that those members in the community will ask questions that will hopefully 
help guide them towards the lines of discovering a greater solution or perhaps giving guidance uh, to better improve their business idea or their business model. So um, we really don't want anyone to, to feel sort of shied away from one MC thinking that the minute you step on stage, your, your, your great ideas are going to be picked apart. The notion is that one MC is really built to encourage, to uplift, to inspire, and to guide um, our, our growing businesses in the community. Next slide. Uh, one MC Cherokee's unique vision is to partner with leaders from each city to carry the banner of entrepreneurship throughout all of Cherokee County. Very plain and simple. That is why we're here. Next slide. The way we have One MC Cherokee set up, One MC by the Kaufman Foundation, one of the specifics of any One MC program is that it occurs on Wednesday mornings. However, the community chooses to set up those Wednesday mornings is really all up to the community. So you have some communities that has them every Wednesday morning. For us in Cherokee County, we choose to do it on the first and third Wednesday of every month. Now, as you can see, the first Wednesday of every month is from 9 to 10 at the circuit in Woodstock. That's our headquarters. The third Wednesday meeting is at any given uh, city in Cherokee County. We've got our calendar on the 1MC Cherokee website, uh, so feel free to take a look at that. We are really delighted to have it here in Canton for this month. Next month for the third Wednesday meeting will be in Waleska at Reinhardt. So really looking forward to that as well. This is our organizing team. We've got Misty Martin in the building somewhere. Misty, wave your hand. Misty! Uh, Jonathan Chambers, where are you, Jonathan? Jonathan, good to see you. Aaron Honey. Um, Brian Stockton from the city of Woodstock. Brian, wave your hand. Tim Norton, who's uh, representing Reinhardt University as well as the city of Waleska, and then, of course, yours truly. Next slide. Big special thanks again to 1MC Cherokee. Uh, the whole partnership, Cherokee Office of Economic Development, that has really uh, helped bring this idea to Cherokee County. Fresh Start Cherokee, the Circuit, City of Holly Springs, City of Woodstock, Reinhardt University, and of course the City of Canton. I uh, really want to thank Voice Over City for providing the AV for um, microphone, visual. Uh, big thanks to, to Voice Over City. You'll hear more from them later. East Main Cafe provided the incredible coffee. Wave your hand, Savannah. Savannah Greenway is one of the owners of East Main Cafe. They are located right across the street. If you enjoy your cup of joe, feel free to walk across the street, grab some more. They've got great pastries too, so big thanks for what you do. Um, and then, of course, the Camp Theater, as I mentioned earlier. We're also mobile. We're social as well, so if you're on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, all the different social platforms, we can be accessed there too. Next slide. Oh, and now our presenter. So, uh, of course, at every one of C meeting, you will hear from a business in Cherokee County. We are delighted to have with us Gerald from Voice Over City and uh, the launching of VOC Media. Please give Gerald a warm welcome.
Within six months, the group was about 50 people. And then within nine months, it was over 100 people. And somewhere along the line, they said, well, there are enough of us to do our own class, so we're bringing out a presenter to do a workshop for us. And I was like, why not, right? Well, we started doing that, and doing workshops and things became a regular for us at least once a month. We'd bring in, or I'd bring in a presenter from Carolina, Texas, New York, Florida, wherever they were. Then at some point, the idea was, well, you know, maybe we should do an event, because all the events in the voice acting community were always New York, or Dallas, or Chicago, or California. So I had this crazy idea that maybe there should be an event that was somewhere within driving distance of Atlanta. Surely there'd be at least 50, 60 people that would drive to the area. Well, that was six years ago, and that small event, which started in 2013, and attracted about 125 people the first year, has grown into the largest voiceover event anywhere in the world, which meets every March. And this March, we had an excess of 700 people attend from 40 states and 12 different countries. Now, that's pretty exciting, but it also creates a lot of opportunity because along the way, you learn a lot, and you make a lot of mistakes and, and things like that. But hopefully mistakes aren't crippling, they're actually building things. You, you learn what to do, what not to do, and all those types of things. So one of the side effects of doing the conference is that I accumulated a massive amount of stuff to support a conference. Because if you've ever rented equipment, you find out that renting is very expensive and it sucks. And usually the gear isn't always the greatest, it's rental gear, right? Well, in the course of doing this event over the years, I ended up with a storage facility that right now measures about 30 feet by 10 feet. And it's stocked full of stuff that I only use four days out of the year. So I got to thinking, there are guys out here running operations that are renting gear, that are you know, hustling, getting by with the smallest gear they can find. And here I am, on the other hand, with sponsors like Sennheiser and other organizations that are global operations equipping me for my conference, but all my gear is sitting in storage for 11 months and 28 days out of the year. So the question was, how do you leverage the resources you have available, the partnerships that you have available, and build something around that? Now, on one hand, that's a pretty simple idea. But where it becomes a little challenging is that the voiceover community is only so big. And there are only so many opportunities or so many events that I can do within it. And the name Voiceover City lends itself to making you think about what? Hello. Voiceover, right? Hello. <laughs> uh, but voiceover isn't all that I'm able to do. So on the about me part, which is there, uh, I've been around technology for a long time. In fact, my first experience in technology was the summer before my ninth grade year back in 1985, training on a Radio Shack Tandy Model 3, TRS-80 Model 3, which is a long, long, long time ago kind of system, right? So I've always been around technology. I've always been around audiovisual stuff. Over the years, I've done a lot of support. So technology in general, audiovisual in general, has always been a part of my existence whether it was fun or work or anything like that. But when it came back to this business side, I said, well, voiceover city is a very limiting idea. So VOC Media is a brand that I came about uh, developing that is still voiceover city, which is the VOC part. But when I say media, it leaves it open to what it means. It allows me to define what media is to you or to a prospective client. So there's an effort right now to somewhat expand the operation but still keep VoiceOver City as the core business because that's where all of the core assets are, the resources, the partnerships, and things like that. And then extend the brand so that VOC Media becomes an 
opportunity to tap into things like live streaming, which we do for the uh, One Million Cups charity every two weeks. Um, this Easter, we'll do a live streaming for the Momentum Church Easter service out of the Woodstock Amphitheater there. And then there are other events, in addition to live streaming the, the conference that I do. So through VOC Media, we'll, we'll do a number of things. Now, the one concept here, the office concept, in the process of developing the VOC Media, the idea was I work out of my home. And you know, a number of other people in a small business do as well. So how do you actually expand something without going overboard? Because I've done the larger office thing before. I've had a 4,000 square foot office in Marietta. And you find out quickly that all the people who supported the idea of an office are rarely the people who show up to training and things to support the office. So this time I said, you know, I want to do it a little different. I want to approach it a little different. So the concept I'm developing is to have a place and right now, I have an office that I started right off Sixers Road in River Park. It's about 1,100 square feet. It has about four office spaces in it. Three of those office spaces are going to be converted for the purpose for different purposes. Uh, one of those is voiceover services. So in the coming weeks, I'll actually have a fully a professional um, acoustic enclosure that will be available for people who want to record voiceover or Maybe they want to lay down a track of music or any type of recording service where they want a professional studio environment without having to go to a music studio. Because if you've ever had to look for one of those, you'll find that you really end up going to Atlanta because there's not a lot in between. And the ones you do find in this region are generally someone's home. And they do it themselves, but they just have a website and that's why you find them in the search. But overall, you don't find many opportunities to go in and record. Not to mention even some of those are um, very limited in what they can offer. So one of the offices will be dedicated to that and have a full enclosure within it. Another one will be photography services. Um, I, before coming here, I had a full-time photography studio. I did photography, a lot of portrait things. So one of the rooms will be dedicated to um, maybe on-camera auditions, headshots, things like that. And anything I do inside the office can also be done outside pretty much. So photography services will be dedicated in one of the rooms. And then, let's see here, video services. Much like this where right now we're live streaming, we're obviously outside of the office. So that's one element. But within the office we'll be doing some video as well. Mostly like actor auditions or someone wants to come in and record a video clip or create something for their website where they just need someone to do it for them so that it's professional and clean, then we'll be able to offer those services as well. Then obviously live streaming is one that um, we talked about, and I don't think I have a slide for the next one, but one of the big things is actually uh, podcasting and helping people start or establish podcasting. One of the things we'll do, and you'll hear about in the coming weeks, will be actually to create a Cherokee-based podcast that will highlight other businesses to expose you to what podcasting is like. Then, let's see here real quick, um, SWAT. We're not gonna get through SWAT, but uh, I'll take 30 seconds so Matthew doesn't kill me with it. But the SWAT is uh, in business, there's a SWAT thing, what's called the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. The strengths is that I have a lot of variety of background, both the technology, visual, and audio services. Weaknesses would be that when you're a lot of things, it's hard to sometimes define exactly what you want to do from a marketing standpoint because you need to cater to a lot of audiences. The opportunities is that we're far enough outside the Atlanta market that people need resources that don't require them to drop to the city. I'm sure all of you look forward to shooting into Atlanta all the time, right? Um, so it's to offer opportunities that are available without someone having to go to Atlanta or Alpharetta or somewhere else. The threats are obviously that technology is always changing. So there's always that chance that something else comes along that's better, faster, cheaper, so you always have to redefine yourself to remain uh, valuable and an asset to the community. I'm going to stop you right there. Okay. Great. Thank you, Tier. We're going to open the floor up now for about 20 <coughs> minutes of Q&A, so feel free to ask away any questions you may have for Daryl. Thank you. Um, if you made a connection with a local um, audio-visual 
um, company that does like installs and live streaming for churches and concerts, would that be an asset to you and how would it be? Well, the question is have I made a connection with other organizations? And the answer is yes. The, the process is a, a little bit tricky because even ones that are familiar with live streaming, a lot of times their information is limited to what they see with the cell phone. You know, we're doing a Facebook Live or a YouTube Live. The other extreme is they think huge production. So where MySpace is is somewhere in the middle of that, where a person understands that they can't cover the event with their cell phone and the other, you know, that they're not in a position to bring in a full production team to do it. So we're trying to kind of thread that needle, but to be a resource. And I do those services for some production companies who they do videography great, but they don't want to get into the live streaming because that's a different animal. That's a great question because I think it's a challenge a lot of small businesses have in terms of how do you scale and provide a variety of services when it's still basically you. The nice thing is that, as is the case with the person that you know, they're running the camera for me now, is that because I do an event and I know people from the community that have supported my event over the years, I've established relationships with, with them. Um, in Stephen's case, who's running the camera, he lives here in the area and he comes from a television production background. So you leverage the relationships you have where you have a core group of people. I think that, that everyone needs to have a core that they can call on <laughs> type of thing, but also if you need to extend beyond that, you can bring in third party resources. But for the type of projects that I want to target, um, they can usually be done with three or four people. And then as a father with a couple of kids, I'm kind of bringing them along to to learn some things in that area as well. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, I was very interested in what you said about the Cherokee podcast. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that and <coughs> cast your vision for what you had in mind for that? Sure. It's uh, <laughs> the the idea was originally to to answer the question how do you how do you promote podcasting services to people. Um, and so initially you think, okay, well, you know, I'll put up a website and you know, do some marketing and advertising. And then I had the thought of what better way to expose them to podcasting than to allow them the opportunity to be a part of it. So right now in my office, which is probably 60% set up as far as the podcast stuff is concerned, um, they come in, they see, you know, the microphones, the mixer, everything like that. So the idea is to work with businesses where it doesn't cost them anything to come in. We do an interview. Um, Jonathan, who's here, he does some post-production work on podcasts. So the idea is to allow them to experience the process. And then if there's an opportunity through podcasting to connect them with their audience, or maybe they just have a, a pet project that they want to do with it to, to leverage those resources. So some of it's consulting. Some of it's, you know, if they want to come in and schedule a time that they come in once a week to record a few shows and then we edit it up for them, then that's certainly the case as well. But it's a no pressure situation. It's one of those things where, you know, the solution may vary from person to person, but uh, getting them in and having that conversation is where you start. <coughs> but I like New Cherokee, it's, it's maybe where you start. Uh, I've you are you planning on doing the podcast in house or are you going to team up with? <coughs> Um, that's a good question. I, I don't have it on my radar at the moment for that because, quite frankly, there are a ton of resources right here in the area. I'm always open to complementary services and relationships. I think that competition doesn't have to mean anti anything. It just means that, you know, you both work hard at what you do. I'm always looking for partnerships and opportunities. But one of the things with the VOC Media concept is to eventually, once this office is set up and going, to actually start another one in Kennesaw and then another one in Marietta. 
so that eventually a person can almost have a subscription base where they could go to any office and, and have access to the same services without having to you know, go to a big music studio and wait on an engineer or pay $150 an hour for that privilege. So you're saying that your podcast would be like almost The Cherokee podcast part is free. There's no, there's no charge or anything. So that, I want to come in and like start on my media side of my business. Mm -hmm. and I want to start supplying like a podcast. I can form a podcast. What would be kind of like, like a subscription based feed the monthly service that I'm paying for? Really? If you wanted, if you wanted to come in regularly to record your sessions, then yeah, we would just set up something where you know we determine how often you want to come in and record whether you want to just be raw recording or whether you want that fully edited. So some people have the skills, they just don't have a location where they regularly do it. And you know, it may seem like a small thing, but when you go home, a lot of times the environment is not one you always control, especially if you have kids or a dog or you know, family or something like that. And it's a different mindset when you get outside of that and you can go somewhere and it's a treated space and there's somebody to worry about the mixer for you and the microphones for you and things like that and you know you can go in and, and, and handle that. Because uh, I like to like hit on like I really like the idea that you have like these multiple locations eventually. Because mm -hmm. I know in my business I'm kind of like all over the state of Georgia at right. times. So it's like maybe one day I'm in Kennesaw and the next time like next up there would be in Kansas. Right. So it'd be nice for me to be able to like you know, you know within my schedule just pop around each one of my subscription like it comes to all of them. Right. And that's where the fun of the IT background comes in is because my things are kind of cloud-based a lot, so any assets you have available to you in Woodstock, you also have available to you in Marietta or Kennesaw. It would just be a matter of bringing up your account. So, who would you consider your uh, target consumer, and then also uh, who's your competition? Target consumer and competition. Uh, that's a great question. The target consumer for me on the live streaming side of it, because it varies a bit. The live streaming side is an event that is trying to reach, say, probably 5, 500 to 5,000 people. They have a budget somewhere around 2000 to $3,000 for their production. Um, because what you find if you ever quoted these things is you have what I'll call the hustler side, which will tell you $500 or, or under, and they come out and they have one camera or you have a full production team where they'll bring out three or four people, a big production rig and supplemental lighting and everything, but you could quickly be looking at a twenty to $30,000 bill. Now, they're, they're really good at what they do, but those are kind of extremes when you go from five hundred to 40000 or 20000 So I think there's a sweet spot in there and an opportunity for people who, you know, maybe they just want to do a big party or, uh, like I mentioned, even here where they do events, to, to have that as a resource so they can say, hey, you know, you're getting married or you're doing an event here in our venue, uh, we have an opportunity for you to add live streaming to that. Because there's only, there's only so much space you can have in anything. And if you're an organization where maybe you have a great product or service, maybe you do something where people come to your location, they love what you do, but it's always crowded. So maybe live streaming is a way to expand that audience without having to expand your physical space. So a target customer is, is someone who's looking to get their content in front of a larger audience. And, and, and I tailor that delivery because, you know, some people automatically think, oh, well, Facebook, YouTube, or, or different things, but you really have to think about where your audience is, not just where you can throw it out there for the sake of it. Pay-per-view? Yeah, so are you, are you handling the payment side of that and all that, or are you letting the figure that out? Okay. Yeah. That's what I do with my conference. I expand it, and you know, it's a great opportunity if you've got good content. When I do my conference, I have people who watch the, the live stream part from all around the world, and my ticket prices range from $99 to $250. And just in that 40 period, it generates about $12,000 in revenue, just from the live side. 
So it's one of those things where if you've got something of value, then you can offer that. I work with some organizations where you can even do drip feed content where maybe there's a series that you do and you can break that down to where they only get access to a certain amount every month or every week, however you do that. And then as long as they're a subscriber, they, they get your packet or access to your content. Yes, sir. Gerald, are you talking? Looking at me? Okay. Um, so there's a podcasting app called Anchor that just recently did a redesign which allows people who may not have money or a lot of time or expertise to professionally produce a podcast. They can do everything from their phone. I think you and I have talked about this before. How do you differentiate like what's your value proposition compared to that if somebody says, well, I can just produce something quick in 10 minutes on my phone and ship it right from there compared to like maybe paying a subscription with you or whatever your model is to come do it professionally? Well, a couple things to that. One, in terms of people that can offer something less expensive, um, you're always going to have that in whatever you're doing. And the analogy I'll give you on that is there's always going to be fast food. You know, if you're open in a restaurant, there's, there's always Crystal's that has something cheap, or Wendy's that's got a dollar menu. So if you make that the premise for everything, then you're, you're never going to do anything. So I try to build a value proposition based on a specific need of that client, which is kind of the catch-22, right? Because it's hard to mass market something that's very tailored to, to the individual. Now, the advantage they have is I tend to steer people away from platforms that ultimately own your data. So while I think Facebook and things are great, ultimately Facebook owns those records. And Facebook can decide to change all the rules and what happens to your business. So I steer people into maintaining and, and operating their own website, even if they're just embedding the content from Facebook. Now when it gets into the live streaming part and the pay-per-view, I actually consult with people to set that up so that you own your client base. And what people pay for is access to the web pages that have the content. The advantage to doing that is that they don't care where the content comes from. I can embed a page from YouTube, from Vimeo, from Facebook, or I post it on the website. The client doesn't need to care where it comes from. All they know is that I paid for access to this page, and that's what I got. When you put it on YouTube or some of the other platforms, if you run into a problem with that platform, you're dead in the water because everything is owned and run on that platform. And believe me, if people pay you one dollar for what you offer, the stakes go up a lot, a lot. All that understanding and it's not a big deal that you got when it was free goes away, even if it's one dollar. And trust me when I say that, the rules change. I had a buddy out of uh, Alabama who he took that, that warning for granted. He went out and covered a sporting event and they ran into a lot of problems. And this was the first time he was charging and he was like $35. And he came back a couple days later and he said, man, I, he said, I owe you a huge apology. I took it for granted when you said it, but we had problems and he got so many hateful phone calls. And he said, you wouldn't believe it. It's just the attitude of people were very different. So if you get into things where you're charging people for, for services like that, make sure you're looking for quality platforms, quality products to run those things. I think it's great to go out and have fun and to find you know, solutions that are DIY and stuff like that. But when I ask you to hand me your credit card or to put money into my account for something, I think I owe it to you to, to deliver a quality product and now I'm not going to be able to go out and buy a hundred thousand dollar platform and, and offer you the service at a hundred dollars. So you know there's a relationship there. But if there's a problem, I shouldn't feel like, oh, maybe I should have spent the twenty dollars. I don't, I don't, you know, approach business like that. And one of the things I always tell people is, I want to be a partner with you, not a vendor. And there's a big difference. You shop for vendors just based on how cheap they can do something. But if someone's a partner with you, you want them to understand what you're trying to do, you want them to have meaningful discussions with you, you want them to offer input and insight based on years of experience or what they see going on in the market. And that's a different thing than just saying, how cheap can you do it? Because trust me, when you get into live production, there are no do-overs. You can't say, hey, can you get married again so I can capture it this time? 
Can you do the football play again so I can capture it this time? It's live. It's live. It's real. <laughs> you know, so the bar, the bar has to be higher. I'm having trouble with my question. I'm sitting here trying to focus it. By the way, you aged me. I, my first computer was a TRZ with my DMP120 matrix printer. I remember those days. So it was a long time ago. Uh, also from the technology background. Um, I guess what I'm struggling is to get my hands around, my mind around exactly what you do. It seems like you do a lot. So it's almost like, you know, you use the word balance at the end, and I'm struggling in my head. I'm thinking, well, focus is your friend. Focus is your friend. What, you know, what, what exactly are you? great at that so you come in and somebody says, tell me what you do, and, and I know they only gave you five or six minutes, but it's so much that I, I, I started with the conference, that seems like you know easy to understand how you monetize that, and that can be a full-time job in and of itself, even though it's only once or twice a year or any other or whatever it is, and then all these services. So what what makes you different that I go to you? Is it just locality because you're, you're close, or that's what I'm trying to figure out is, what, what do I come to you for except for I do all of these things, which one do you want to do to talk to me? It's a great question. And I'll start off, I, I believe in you know being transparent with you, right? Yeah. Is that is one of the challenges. Yeah. And even in my IT career, it was the same thing. Being good at a lot of things is great, but it's sometimes hard to define what exactly you do. So there's I think there's always going to be that challenge for me is that my experience is over a large variety of things. I've always played a support role, which works well for me, but it also requires you to constantly change right. and adapt. So one of the questions I get all the time in IT is, well, do you like PC better or Mac? Mac, obviously. <laughs> I'm like, I don't care. I, I, you know, from a support standpoint, I don't have the luxury of having a preference like that. Yeah. You know, I say, I prefer the tool that gets the job done. Because I've never handed someone a document and them go, did you print this on an Epson or an HP? Yeah. Who cares? You know, the, the idea is that you provide a solution. And so, you know, I don't have a magic answer to that, so I'm not going to smoke screen you on it. It is an ongoing challenge, and it's, unfortunately, it comes down to almost a per situation basis, because the relationship I'll have with Momentum Church covering their Easter service I can tailor that message to them, yeah. but the message I would give to the Cherokee Youth Sports Association to go out and live stream football games on the weekend is a very different thing because the audience is different. Their mission is different. These, these individuals at the church want to get their message out for religious purposes. Over here, they want to put the kids in front of parents who can't make it to the games. So, you have to think, okay, what exactly do I tell them? You know, the church may be more interested in, you know, me being able to put together the web page so that there's a chat box that can take prayer requests and they can take donations. The youth team may be more interested in can password protected so that, you know, we protect the kids and things. So I think it's a, I think it's a challenge overall. Um, you know. I appreciate the transparency. Just a suggestion, I would think that it's easy. In most small business I've seen, it's easier to focus on one or two things you do great, advertise that, and bring the rest of it as supporting those things you do best as opposed to trying to be all things to all people. Because uh, I, I, I appreciate the transparency because I mean, I've gone through that same thing and trying to figure out exactly what, you're, you, know, what you do great. And yeah, it's a tough one. It's, it ends up being kind of like, who, who does Home Depot, you know, what are they, you know, what is Walmart? What is, what is the gym? You know, you have to find a level where you say, you know, fitness. But what does that mean? Yes. <laughs> you know, it's like it can be a lot of things. So that's it's the same challenge. And it's a part of the reason that you step out in things like this, right? Well, because it's the questions that help you sometimes to find the answer. And so I, I appreciate you asking. And you know, hopefully next time we can cross paths, I'll give you a more concise question. Yeah. We've got time for one more question from the audience. And there was one gentleman right here. Yes, yeah. So I had the same issue. Although I get the voiceover and I get the production mm -hmm. piece of it, I understand that. But, I, but to kind of uh, build what you were saying, there's a lot you do. Okay. So how do you capsulize that and say, this is who uh, VOC Media is? And out of that, how do you market yourself? How do you take that to market? 
who is your target market, and even within that, when I was listening to you present, every one of your categories could be a different target market, and there could be sub-targets within that. So where would you get the biggest bang for your buck to really position you? I'll give you an example. If you're doing live streaming for one church, you can build upon that. There's a bazillion churches just in Canton alone that you can market yourself to to provide similar services or live services or voiceover. They all have productions. They can be large or they can be small. Um, the, the sports, you know, live streaming sports, once you market to one, market to another. And part of one of the things that we're doing in our business is once we break ground in a particular segment of the market, then we're starting to open up that segment of the market and expanding it across so that if it works, we'll start to build within that particular market and from that point, sub-markets and so forth. So my encouragement to you would be really define what it is you do and to find who that target market is, maybe this is one or two key things that you know people generally need, right. and then build from there. So I guess it's common, yeah. not so much. Well, that's exactly where I was going with that, it's, it's the focus. <clears throat> Thank you, I, I wish we could, we gotta, we gotta keep it moving though for the time being, but I will say, if anyone has any more questions for Gerald, uh, he'll be around for a minute, please be sure to ask. One thing we always do at 1MC is we close out the Q&A session with this question, of uh, Gerald, what can your community do to support you? You just write a check, right? Let's just cut to the chase, right? <laughs> you know, five figures is good. Uh, no, um, I, I don't have a, a huge ask at this point. I, I think that for me, it, it almost goes back to, to what you're saying is um, anytime I have an opportunity to get out and you know, engage with clients, in particular, you know, live streaming is something I really enjoy a lot right now because it's not something that everyone can tackle. Um, so if you know some event, whether it's a church event or sports event, uh, that could benefit from getting their message out to a larger audience. Um, those are obviously great referrals. If there's a venue that hosts events that you think they may be open to the idea of having it as a service that they offer. Um, so we don't need to go in and take over anything. Like I said, I want to be a partner. So it may be the case of them being able to simply say, hey, you're hosting you know, X event here on the 31st. You know, if you're interested in live streaming, we have a, a business partner who can, who can assist you with that and get it on Facebook or YouTube or all of them at the same time um, with, with pro gear and make sure it's, it looks good and sounds good. That would probably be the answer for me. Thank you, Gerald. Thank you, Gerald. <laughs> Gerald, for uh, sharing your idea, for your boldness to, to come up and share with us everything about v, what VOC Media does, who you are, we would like to provide you with. He's got a check. Not yet. <laughs> I don't have that authority. Our city manager was here. He may, but. <laughs> um, a cup, a coffee cup, of course, one million cups. We always have coffee, so there's more good coffee drinking for you. And you need to Canton, you also get a seat of Canton cup as well. Bonus cup. Yes, sir. That's what your community does for you. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. You see me on the corner with a cup. I can't even. Can we give Gerald more round of applause? Thank you. Before we go, has everyone submitted a business card in for the drawing? We got prizes. All right. All right. Here we go. We are giving away first. Let's give a one million cup. So let's give one million coffee. Yeah. No. I mean, imagine if they're getting cash away. No. Right. Three the same cards. Gregory at the court? Yeah, not at you. Can I get the candy cup? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we can't put 10 cards in every time. Hey, man, it's like every time. It's a thick card. How does it do? It's a thick card. Is that your shot? Mark Caldwell. Hey. All right. Hey. I'll have the orange. 
Scott Lumen. Is that right? Lumen? Scott, first time with us. Thanks for coming in. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Please keep in mind the next time we'll meet will be Wednesday, April 4th at 9 at the circuit. Again, if you have any more questions for Gerald, please feel free to ask. I do want to tell you too, if you are ever curious about looking at past presentations, perhaps you're interested in presenting a business idea yourself. One Million Cups slash Cherokee is our home website. All the content, every time we've met, uh, it's all recorded. So feel free to pull that up live. Uh, feel free to pull up that recorded data at any time. We always store it there. You probably should explain the slide that just popped up with Reformation too. Oh, yes. Reformation Brewery is our presenter uh, the next time we meet on April 4th. If sure no one wants to miss that, maybe be surprised. Uh, so, will we have <laughs> it's still one million cups, but no one's going to have to talk. We talked about one million pints, kind of spinning off. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But again, thanks for coming. We are adjourned. Yeah.